I'm John Graviscus. It's great to have you back in the boat shop with us. What I'm sitting in is our 1983 25-foot pursuit project boat. Just a couple of episodes back, we started the process of getting this boat ready for a do-it-yourself paint job. We removed the bow pulpit from the craft, we took off the bow rail, we took off the molded fiberglass hard top, the windshield, all kinds of stuff in order to start the process of fixing some of the damaged areas. We had some spider cracking issues and we showed you how to deal with some spider cracking issues. Well today on the program we're going to get even more into that topic. We're also going to talk about molded non-skids, all right? I had some very aggressive molded in non-skid that came original from the factory, Pursuit, okay, back in 1983, and it worked very effectively. However, it was so sharp, it was so pointy, that I would have to use some type of a rag or padding in order to kneel on it. Now, I've got little kids, and you get out on the water and, and somebody falls. Well, the last thing I want is one of my kids to have the hide ripped off of them because of this non-skid, okay? We want non-skid, we want traction, but I'm thinking maybe we could go a little different route. I want to grind it all off. I want to put in some fairing compounds, sand everything, and then paint it. But this time, the non-skid that I'm going to go with is going to work, but it's going to be friendly. I'm going to show you how to suspend it in paint. We're going to roll it out. Now, you might have a molded pattern of non-skid where a sinker's hit it, or maybe you've got a hole where, where a seat used to be, or, or some delamination. Well, today we're going to show you how to repair the patterned non-skid. Very, very incredible stuff. And wait until we get into the issue of dealing with a bootstripe, a decorative bootstripe border for the boat. But guess what? Before we can get into any of this stuff, shoot, you know the drill by now. You see, we need to work out a little trade-off. We've got to get all of you to spend the next 30 minutes with us as we're working right here in the boat shop. And then in exchange with, again, the help of a few of my very knowledgeable friends in the marine industry, we're all going to be pooling together in order to do our very best to let you in on a few more ways to make your boat ship shape. And I better get to work here. I got a lot of grinding. The founder and host of Ship Shape TV, John Graviscus. Well, thanks, Buck. I want to bring you up to speed with what we have done to the hull sides in order to get it ready for paint today here at Ship Shape TV. If you'll recall, we had some varying degrees of spider cracking issues on the outer hull. If a spider crack gets pretty deep and goes into the fiberglass shop strand mat, okay, and, and that's a cosmetic fiberglass that they put into the outer skin of the boat, and that's to mask off the print pattern of the structural fiberglass. Okay, if a spider crack goes into that, you're going to need to grind into the boat, grind into that fiberglass chop strand mat, and you're going to need to laminate in some new fiberglass chop strand mat. Now, this boat was originally built with polyester resin, okay? So what we used for the repair there was polyester resin, okay? We want things to stick to one another. We want things to bond, all right? So we want to use the same material. But we also had some less dramatic spider cracks in the outer hull. Now here we can just kind of grind those out and not go into any fiberglass at all. And we can use some type of a putty or a body filler. But we need to make sure that things are going to stick because here's where we're trying to go with this. We're trying to take a fiberglass part that has polyester-based gel coat over top of it and we're trying to get a polyurethane paint. We're going to be using Interlux's Perfection paint. It's a do-it-yourself polyurethane paint, great paint, all right? We're trying to get that to stick to the fiberglass part. So what we have to do is we have to make sure that the putties are going to be compatible with not only the boat, the polyester on the boat, but also the polyurethane, all right? It's called a tie coat type of system. We selected 3M's premium filler here. It's a vinyl lester type of filler. All right, and we use that. Now, once we sanded it all down using 80 grit, we put something else that's going to tie the gel coat and the fiberglass to the polyurethane paint. 
we used a primer that Perfection puts out. We rolled it all over the hall. And what I've been doing for the last couple of days is I've been sanding it with 400 grit paper. Now I'm just about done with, with the sanding process. Once it gets completed, we're going to wipe down all the dust using some denatured alcohol. And we're going to tack rag the boat. That's going to get any fine particulate off of the surface so we get a nice, shiny paint job. Okay? But we're painting here in the boat shop, and we have a concrete floor. Here's a little tip. If you're painting over a concrete floor, put down some water. Okay? That's going to settle the dust that's in the air right out of your paint job. You're going to get a great paint job this way. Now, we need to mix this paint up. All right? It's a two-part formulation. All right? And we need to let it set for a little while. Okay, just a little while so that it kind of tacks up. We'll come back and we're going to roll it using a roller that will kind of handle solvents. Okay, because this is solvents. You've got to make sure you're wearing the, the proper protective gear. Okay, but with the foam roller, we're going to roll out about a three-foot section. Another man's going to come back immediately behind him with a good quality animal hair brush, and that's key. You've got to have it. And we're going to brush this paint that's just been rolled, and it's going to flow out. Okay, and eventually it's going to look fantastic. But the first coat that you put on, you're going to stand back, you're going to look at your work, and you're going to go, what in the world was John talking about? This boat doesn't look that great yet. It's okay, you, you don't have enough paint on. You got to let it set up. Come back the next day, lightly sand it with 400 grit, wipe it down with the denatured alcohol, tack rag it again, and do the whole process over again. Put a second coat on. Do it a third time. After that third coat, man, you're going to sit there and be so proud of the paint job you just did. Well, hey, right now, we need to take another time out, but keep it right here because when we come back, we're going to be dealing with paint and non-skin on the inside of the boat for traction. It's really cool information, and we'll get into it right after this. We have been painting our 25-foot pursuit project boat. Now, just before the break, we were rolling and tipping the outer hull with Fighting Lady Yellow. And since several days have passed, we've gone ahead and we've painted our gunnel caps white. The inside of the boat has not only been ground down with this machine right here. It's a soft pad with some 60 grit paper. We wanted to get off that really aggressive non-skid. We wanted to grind it off. We fared the deck. We've sanded it. we put on high build primers. And we've put on finish paint. We've been using Interlux's Perfection paint here today on the program. But now we're kind of ready to put on some painted non-skid down in some key areas down here on the deck in order to get some traction. And take a look at that, okay? Do you see that masking tape, these borders, okay? We're going to have a combination of smooth area with smooth paint. And we're going to have some non-skidded areas. And that leads us to our next expert guest. Hi, Bob. Hi, John. How Great are you? Great to see you again, my thanks, friend. Thanks for having me. I, it's, it's always a pleasure. Bob is with Interlux. And he's been on the program a bunch of times before. And you will continue, my friend, because you just bring so much information. Hey, I want to add some traction to the paint. And I know that there are some paint products out there that have non-skid mixed up in them. Could you please show me a couple examples here and who, who's making this stuff? Sure, John. There's a couple examples. Okay. Um, there's a product made by Evercoat called uh, Skid No More. There are some private label brands. Uh, we also make a product called uh, Inner Deck, which is a one-part polyurethane with the non-skid already mixed into it. Okay, just real quick, the difference between a one-part polyurethane and a two-part polyurethane, one parts are easier to apply. They're less money, okay? Two parts are more durable, they cost a little bit more, but they don't make them where the non-skid's mixed up in them. So we have to do that ourselves, okay? And this is some non-skid, okay? This is a white, beady type of material, and this is what gives the attraction, okay? But, but why don't we just go down to the beach and grab a cup of sand that doesn't cost anything, and mix it into our paint and we have traction. Why do we need to spend money for this? Well, John, this is a polymeric uh, synthetic bead that absorbs the paint that you're using so it becomes sort of one with the paint, if you will. The sand, if you use it, will settle down into the paint film. 
uh, settled down into the paint that you're going to apply. And when you go to roll it out, it's not going to be as uniform. This will sort of remain in suspension a lot better and give you a much more uniform finish at the end of the day. Okay, how much non-skid do I want to mix up in a quart of your paint? Uh, about four, in four ounces by volume of the non-skid compound into a mixed quart of paint. That should give you a good uniform finish. Do we need to let it set up or can we start rolling it out right away? You want, once you mix it in, stir it in real well, let it set up about five to ten minutes, and then stir it just one more time before you apply it or pour it into a paint tray. Okay, now as you're rolling it out, okay, it's important to occasionally agitate that paint, get the non-skid resuspended. Okay, in the material, if, you know, gravity, okay, if it does kind of settle down to the bottom of the paint, just kind of stir it up, okay, and that'll give you a nice uniform coverage. Talk to me about the foam roller that we're using and, and how thick is this roller and why are we using this particular one? Well, there's the right tool for the right job, and here we have a yellow foam roller. It's a marine grade roller. It's one-eighth of an inch thick, and it holds up to the solvents in the paints that are available today, and they, the roller won't fall apart comes in about a seven inch. This happens to be a nine inch roller. There's three inch rollers as well. Do you see the material that's on this little foam brush? Okay. Don't use a roller with the same material. It will disintegrate in solvents yes. over time and that's going to get in your paint job. You're not going to like it. Okay. You also don't want to brush it. All right. That's very important because you're going to be dragging the non-skid and you're going to see channels. You're going to see grooves. Don't do that. There's two different ways that you can apply non-skid. You can either suspend it and roll it out with the foam roller, or you can roll a film of paint and you can sprinkle some non-skid onto the actual hatch or, or your deck. And what I have here is just little, a little uh, uh, quart mixing cup okay, that I put some holes in the top here. You can just sprinkle that out. Let it set for a day. You can come back with a, with a vacuum with bristles on it. You can uh, vacuum up the excess right. and you can paint another coat of film on there. So there are a couple of techniques. But Bob, what I want to do is, is, can you stick around? Sure. Because real quick, we need to take another time out. But keep it right here because when we come back, we're going to show you how to repair patterned non-skid. Okay, it's going to blow you away. And then Bob and I are going to teach you how to paint a bootstripe on the boat. We'll cover it right after this. We've been talking paint and non-skid today here at Shipshape TV, and where we're going to finish up is by painting on a high-end bootstripe on our classic 1966 20-foot Bertram Moppy project boat. Hey, welcome back. We have the privilege of having okay. Bob Donay. Hey, Bob. On the program, Bob's with Interlux, and we're going to be using a different type of paint for our bootstripe. It's really easy to work with, okay? It's not the perfection paint. What are we going to be using to give us something that's just going to make this boat pop when it's out on that water? Well, today you're going to use a product called Brightside. It's a one-part polyurethane with Teflon, which gives it some good abrasion resistance, chemical resistance, gloss retention, and overall hardness for a long-lasting bootstripe. When you're pulling a tape line for a bootstripe, you want to use the fine line masking tape. Don't take out the tape a couple inches at a time and tack it to the hull. You want to do like six, eight feet at a time. This is going to give you a nice straight edge. You might want to follow your bottom paint line or, or your water line on the boat for aesthetics, okay? And you want to use a rag and you want to make sure that you have some good contact coming between the masking tape and the hull. And then if you need to, you can add some masking tape over top of it if you're going to be rolling it. And that is what we're going to be using. We're going to be using a little small yellow one eighth inch nap roller and we're going to be rolling it out. But talk to me about what direction do we want to brush it out? Because we're trying to get a sprayed finish, Bob, not a brushed look. Well, you want to roll it out fore and aft, and then you want to take a good badger hair or, or china bristle brush and drag the brush right back into the surface that you just applied. How, Lifting how many the strokes? Brush. How many strokes? Just one, one stroke is all you need. The idea there is just to pop the bubbles that are formed by the roller, and the brush just levels it out. And then you can come back brush right back into the wetted surface area and that'll eliminate your brush marks. You want to keep a wetted edge, that's the key, okay? And once you're done, you can pull that mask and tape off, you're going to have, with that fine line, you're going to have a perfect line with your bootstripe. Bob, we need to thank you, no as well as thank everybody you. else over at...